Hi, this is Pink Girly with Time to Be Creative. And uh, this is 10 Coloring 101 Part 3. I'm hoping to show you how to finish up her face. This is an image from the Momo coloring book that I spoke about in Coloring 101 Part 2. And I'm going to show you how I did her eye. See, I finished her eye and this side of her face. How to finish up the lips, and then I'm going to show you, hopefully, if I have enough time um, on my iPad here, to show you how I'm going to do her hair. So, we had talked about light layers of color. I'm using Prismacolor Premier pencils, and I'm going to just add a little cheek color to the to her right side of her face. And I'm going to add some color with Prismacolor. Oh, I think that looks like 928. It's called Rose. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, if it's helpful for you, hold your pencil back. Now this guy's, you know, I've ground this down quite a bit. So he's short, but just small circles. I'm adding some layer of pink just to give her cheek a little bit of color. I don't want a whole lot of color. Just want a little blush to look a little, um, just very subtle. I don't even know if you can pick it up on that side. And I like to do around the side of her, their faces, like around the temple, kind of temple area. And just bring it down into the cheek area. And as you come out into this area towards the nose, you just want to kind of lighten up as much as you can. I like to do underneath the eye. And I just really want a hint of um, pink. Now, if you're coloring an image and you want more color, you can use a different color pencil. Or you just can continue to add layers of, say, this, this rose color. Sometimes I'll do a more of an orangey color, just depends on on what kind of a look I'm going for. Now see, I can start to see that pinking up a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the video. And then I'm going to come back in with my Deco Peach, because as I mentioned in my last video, my light peach pencils are ground down to practically nothing. And this is number 1013. That's working out okay. Um, and so then we're just going to go back over the top. Very light circular strokes. And start to blend in that light rose color that we just added. And you want to get it to a point where you really can't see any ending or beginning of that light pink color. Now see for me I can tell the difference right here where I can see where that rose color ends and my deco pink begins. And this is, a, you know, this takes a while but I enjoy it. I find it very relaxing especially when you start to see especially if you're doing a face, the face come alive So this isn't finished by any stretch of the imagination, but I want to try to get to her hair, so we're just going to leave it at that. So you just want to continue until you get it to the place where it, it's acceptable and you like it. For her lips, I did basically the same thing. I used this rose pink color, small circular strokes, real light. Just really kind of basing in color. And then I want to come in with number 922, which is Poppy Red. This is where I would like to, to really move my picture, but I don't know if that's helpful for you. I'm just going to kind of come on the outside edge of her lips. Almost like you're putting a lip liner on. It's 
small circles again. Very light, light bit of color. Then I'm going to come in here. I want a little bit of white and highlight. It's kind of like a little mark there right on the lip that the uh, illustrator, the artist, put for us. Just going to put a little bit of white there. And then I'm going to come back in with my rose. And I'm going to start on top where I had that poppy red that I just put in. And I'm going to start pulling that down and blending that. I'm not sure the poppy rose was the best choice. It looks a little too orange to me. Of course now you can come in with other color. We wanted it more red. You can also go over your color and blend with your white pencil. A lot of people do that. They don't use a blending tool. They come in with the white. It looks a little better. Hopefully you get the idea. Just small strokes and you can see that it's starting to come together there on her lips. And I probably will come back in there and um, maybe add a little more red to her lips, brighten up her lips a little bit. Now let's talk about the eye. I did put some white in um, the white part of her eye. But I just want you to understand that, see, I don't know if you can see that. I just used my white pencil on top of orange. So if I go in to do the white of her eye now with my pencil like this, I'm going to get some orange hue in her eye, which I don't want. So I just want to give that a little bit of a sharpen. So I have a clean white pencil. And I'm just going to come in and whiten up the white of her eye. And I love green eyes. And I like them to kind of look like they're illuminated a little bit and they kind of like light up so I like to use this chartreuse and that's Prisma Premier color 989 and all I'm going to do is just come in here and lightly again light strokes lightly color in the iris of the eye there is a little bit of a lighter spot there like over here you can see some white so I'm going to add a little bit of white there and then I'm going to use some moss green that's number 1097 and I'm just going to do a little bit of an outline around that green like that Okay, and then again, I'll check my white pencil and make sure it's cleaned off. And I want to add a little bit of white to her eye lid, and then her bottom of her eye. And then I like to do the artist gives you the other black. I like to do around the eye in the pencil. The pupil, a lot of times, I will do in, um, say, with a Sharpie pen marker or a Posca paint pen. Posca paint pen uh, looks like this. And uh, I don't know anywhere in a box, you know, brick and mortar store where you can purchase these. I get it online, but, you know, there may be. And, um, these are fairly new to me. They have them in all different colors. I have a set with a lot of different colors, but um, I'm mostly, you know, if you can afford to get one or two, I would get a black and a white. But today I'm just going to color in, and I'm going to leave the um, white highlight that they have put in here for us. I'm going to try to just go around that. 
and do the black in the color pencil. And then I'm going to come at the very outside edge where I put that dark green and just highlight the eye a little bit. Now I need to turn this, I apologize, but I like to give the girls a little eyeliner. And I take it just a little bit past the uh, eyeball, the iris, and then follow the line that the artist has here for you. And I just color in that top part of the eye lid. And then just go ahead and do the um, eyelashes. Now, sometimes um, there's some indication there from the artist. Like you can see them on this lower, her lower lashes, but there's none on the top. Um, so follow along what they have. I make sure that my black pencil, and that's number 935, is, um, you have a really nice point on it. You don't want a lot of pressure and just light strokes. You don't want them real straight. And just follow what the artist has. And you can always add a few more if you feel confident. And then like with the eyelashes, I don't like mine with a lot of curve in them. But you don't want them stick straight because that's not how our eyelashes grow. So you just kind of go for it. Just little tiny strokes. And you're down with your pencil and as you pull up you kind of lift up with the pencil and they don't have to be exact because our eyes don't match either and then when I'm all finished I'll come back with uh, probably the white Posca marker uh, and and really make sure that that white highlight really pops so that's the basic idea of, um, you know, doing the flesh. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. And you can see this is really not finished. It's not smooth. It still has some grainy areas, like her neck and her hand. I worked on that a little bit, but I didn't, that's not finished either. Okay. Now, I'd mentioned in my last video, Dee Dee Willingham, who is an artist who uh, streams live and has over 900 uh, YouTube videos in, in a variety of genres. Um, but if you have a chance to check out her coloring videos, I would suggest that you do that. And she has really um, opened up my coloring world because I colored everything from colored pencil to the piece is finished and you can do that but I'm going to show you what um, I've been doing for the hair that Dee Dee introduced me to and I'm going to base coat in the base color with a marker and I'm choosing red this is just a Crayola super tip washable marker it's a kids marker you can buy them in sets I think of 12, 20, 50 and 100 they're relatively inexpensive. Of course, if you can afford to get the 100 I think that's like um, $15 at Walmart. You get a lot of different colors, and you can base coat a lot of your uh, coloring projects with this. These, like I said, are washable, so they're water-based. So when you base coat, I mean, to be on the safe side, you should put something under it, but this should not bleed through to the other side. If you decide to base coat with an alcohol marker, like your, um, I have Spectrum Noir markers, they're alcohol based, and the Copics are alcohol based, they'll bleed right through to the other side. So if you have a two-sided two coloring page, you're going to have color that's going to bleed through. So you just have to be aware of that. But all I'm going to do um, is go in and start coloring her hair. Just going to base coat it in. I'm going to go around these little white dots. I think they're supposed to be little petals. And uh, this has like a bullet point. I don't know if you can see that. 
so you can get a wider coverage if you lay on the side of the marker and um, you know a finer point if you come up on the marker so you can kind of do those little wispies with this marker as well I always do those at the end but you certainly can do them you know whenever you're comfortable and you don't want to run back and forth over top of um, the same spot just because you don't want your paper to get real wet and rub a hole into your piece so you have to be aware of that I think I should give up on those little petals I'll have to do those maybe in a marker and then what we'll do is we'll come in with um, some colored pencils and we'll accent her hair. Now these are all little curly cues around her face, little wisps. And you can of course do any color hair that you want. I just am loving the red hair. And sometimes I do pink or blue, especially if you're coloring one of those um, manga, pop manga books. They're the figures with the great big eyes. They're from Japan. And they're fun to color. I give them all crazy different color hair. So I'm just trying to get this in quickly. So I have enough time on my video to show you how to, to work on the hair. Um, if you have any questions when I upload the videos, you can leave me a message there. Or you could email me. Um, my email is time, like the spice, time to create. I couldn't get time to be creative at gmail. So it's time, T-H-Y-M-E, the number two, the letter B, and then create at Gmail. And if you have any questions, I can get back to you and help you with that. Whatever question you might have. And sometimes I'll just put a little bit of this in the eyebrows, but mostly I'll come back, I think, with the color pencil and the darker color. Um, in the Prisma colors, there's a Tuscan red that you can use as your deep shading color. Whoa! I just uh, dropped my marker and made a big red line across the page. But that's okay, because I'm going to paint the... Uh, I'm going to paint the background with acrylic paint. So just take your time around her face. Um, so there's Tuscan Red. And I had started um, doing the dark shadows with that, with my red marker hair. But I didn't think the um, contrast was deep enough. So I've been using dark purple to. Um, I'm, I'm being a little messy here because I'm kind of hurrying. But as I said, I'm going to come back with acrylic paint and do the background. Um, I'll show you that in a different video. And so I'm just kind of scrubbing in the space color. And like I said, with the watercolor, it doesn't bleed through. But if you had a Copic marker, I'll just do it here. Oh, well, this one's not too bad. Because it's a light pink. But see, I don't know if you... If I dinked her face, I'm going to be upset with myself. I don't know if you can really see with my camera. I don't really 
really have too much in the way of the Copics. Let me see. I have, um, let me get one of these. I'm going to do the background black, so. This is my uh, Spectrum Noir marker. I still can't. This this is really heavy cardstock, but you can kind of see the shadow. You just want to be careful because you don't want to spend all your time working on this terrific coloring project and uh, where you're in like your favorite color book and you're not paying attention and you're marker bleeds through to the other side. Oh, that can be very upsetting. And coloring should be relaxing. So we'll just finish. And I'm just scrubbing over top of all the lines here. The other thing is if you base coated her hair, say you wanted to use an acrylic paint, um, you wouldn't have any of these detail lines. You wouldn't be able to see. And like I said, I just copied this on my copier from my book so, so we could do the video. And I could show you step by step how I go about coloring my faces. And another thing you need to remember is when you're doing the uh, marker, when you come back in with your color pencil, you want to make sure that your color pencil, I mean that your marker is dry. Because if your paper is wet, you'll tear up your paper with your color pencil. Alright, I'm just going to spin her so I can get the top of her head. I'm not sure I'm on camera here. To the top of her head. Now I'm going to highlight her hair with orange and white. And I'm going to do the dark shadow colors, hopefully, with deep purple. I hope I brought my deep purple out here. I mostly color at night in front of the TV while my husband's watching TV. So I keep most of my coloring supplies by my chair in the living room. But I record out in my craft space. Okay, so that's pretty good. You want pretty good coverage. And you just want to make sure it's dry. That dries pretty quick. I'm at 23 minutes on my video, so I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. And I didn't pull out my... Okay, so this is the dark purple. And that's number 931. I'm going to just quick give this a little hit with my heat gun. She looks real cute already, though, right? With the red hair. Woo! Okay. Okay, so then all I'm going to do is the same thing. You want to use, you know, fairly light strokes because you can come back and do several um, coats and get it as dark as you like. But I'm going to just be pulling, put my, my pencil down, and I'm just going to be pulling. And as I pull the color, it's lighter and feathierier at the, at the far end. I'm laying down the color, and I'm lifting up my pencil, pressing down and lifting up, okay? So this is all I'm going to do, and I'm just following along where the artist has already given us direction and shadows for where that dark shadows need to be. And I'm just kind of drawing over top of those lines. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to try to concentrate just in this area here. And then you have to just decide where you want your highlights. And I mean, I have no formal training, but I know I've read and been told that, you know, you have to decide where the light is coming from. And I always seem to have it come from the right. So if, if it's coming from the right, this part of her head here and these little highlights up here would catch the light. So that's where you want to make your uh, bright colors to get the contrast to um, make those colors pop. And so I'm going to take my orange, that's number 913, and I don't really know, because the hair is so bright of a red to begin with, I'm not sure how much of a contrast um, you're going to be able to see. But see, I want to pick up some highlighting right here. So I'm just taking very light strokes with my orange. And then to brighten that a little bit more, I'm going to put in some more white, some white over top of that. Okay. And if you don't like the way that looks, just put a little more orange on top. And you can just keep layering like that. See, there's a little spot here. I'm going to hit that. And then I'm going to come back in with my white. And again with my orange. And you may decide that you like to leave the white on top. I tend to like the orange to be the last color. And if I stroke this orange right up against where I have that deep purple, and intensify that color, it really makes the orange pop. Okay, my camera's probably going to so uh, turn off in a little bit, so if I lose you, um, I just want to thank you for watching and uh, encourage you to look for the next video in the series, which would be part four. And I think for part four, we'll um, attack her sweater. I'm just going to do a simple coloring in of the sweater. And I'll just continue like this till I get her hair looking the way I want. I'll just come in and deepen all these dark shadows. Of course, the top of her hair, you know we're going to want some highlighting there. This part here, I'm just going to color this in where it's dark. Follow those guidelines that are already there for us. And then I, um, you know, you kind of feel when your pencil's getting dull. See, my pencil's starting to get a little dull. I like to work with a sharp pencil. So I'll just give it a couple of little twists. And I like to make sure my crumbs are all, always brush my crumbs away. Now, if you were going to do her um, with black hair, I would not base coat her totally with a black marker because then you're going to, um, you'll cover up all these details. So you have to leave some spaces, and I usually highlight with blue. So if you're going to do black hair, you may decide to just do that with straight pencil. And when you base coat with a marker, the project goes so much more quickly for you because you're not, you know, layering in all those different colors. Add a little highlight here. I hope you can see this. 
on the iPad that it pops. I just love the way that color pops. And can you see the difference? Now you may you may at some point want to come back and just leave some white white highlights. But like Dee Dee says, it's your coloring book, your coloring project, so you really can do whatever you want. You can give this girl green hair if you like. So that's basically all you're going to do until you get her hair looking the way uh, that you like and you're satisfied. So my time's about up here on my iPad. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with part four of Coloring 101. Thanks. Have a good afternoon.